children let's see what is this next one trying to say quite good sum good quality sum it says that prove that under root of 1 minus sin theta upon 1 plus sin theta is sec theta minus 10 theta now you must be seeing on your screen that sir has repeated this particular sum once again no i would like to solve this particular sum in two ways method number one method number two right now what is the difference difference between the two methods is what you have to gauge it i shall give you everything right and then it's totally your call should i go with method number one or should i go with method number two let's start the very first thing what makes the sum very unique and different from others answer is the root sign involved over here a radical being involved right so if i see my lhs has a root sign and my rhs doesn't have it so i shall claim this as root to non-root it's only my way of saying this is my lhs and this is my rhs we are into two proof sums so we have to take either lhs and prove it rhs or vice versa so let's start let's start with our lhs so our lhs is under root of under root of 1 minus sin theta upon 1 plus sin theta now children what makes this sum unique as i stated earlier the sum which makes it unique is the root sign right now in your class 9th you'll have studied something called as rationalization right rationalizing the denominator so whenever we had a third and this particular word is used mainly in thirds so whenever we had a binomial third we used to rationalize with its conjugate we used to rationalize with its conjugate so here the denominator is 1 plus sin theta what shall be the conjugate of 1 plus sin theta 1 minus sin theta you will are very much aware so whenever we have a root sum whenever we have a root sum we always multiply by its conjugate and rationalize the denominator right so here i am starting my sum as uh, this is our lhs which is equals to 1 minus sin theta as it is we are writing it here 1 plus sin theta again now when i multiply by the conjugate of 1 plus sin theta what is the conjugate of 1 plus sin theta 1 minus sin theta what is that conjugate over here whatever we multiply in the denom uh, denominator the same is what we are supposed to multiply in the numerator we cannot change it so we always take the conjugate of the denominator 1 plus sin theta conjugate is 1 minus sin theta whatever we do in the denominator the same shall go in the numerator now what is left what is left here it is 1 minus sin theta into 1 minus sin theta shall i say it is 1 minus sin theta the whole square likewise in the denominator it is 1 plus sin theta into 1 minus sin theta so a plus b a minus b a square minus b square 1 square minus sin square 1 square minus sin square now children here i would like to give you a technique whenever you go from a root to non root sum rationalizing the denominator sum right always whatever i'm saying for the next minute or so keep this in mind always there are three formulas which you all have very much come across a plus b the whole square a minus b the whole square and a square minus b square a plus b the whole square a minus b the whole square a square minus b square children a square minus b square will always be there in the sum it has to be right if it is there in the numerator then something else will be there in the denominator and if it is there in the denominator something else will be there in the numerator but a square minus b square has to be so what did i say a plus b the whole square a minus b the whole square a square minus b square so now when we know that a square minus b square is there we are left with a plus b the whole square a minus b the whole square out of this two one has to be there so how many parts we have we have numerator and denominator right out of which a square minus b square is fixed so if a square minus b square is there in the denominator numerator will have either a plus b the whole square or a minus b the whole square and vice versa means if a square minus b square is there in the numerator then a plus b the whole square or a minus b the whole square will be there in the denominator for sure sir i have a question from this a square minus b square and when you say that multiply by conjugate a square minus b square will always be there in the denominator why did you say that converse can happen children just wait for five seven minutes ten minutes max the moment i reach finish off my this solution i shall make you understand why okay so 
1 minus sine theta, the whole square, 1 square minus sine square theta. As I stated, a square minus b square will be there. It is there. a minus b the whole square will be there. Or a plus b the whole square. One of them will be there. There. Now, never expand that. Never expand a plus b the whole square or a minus b the whole square. Please don't do that. So now what? Children, I'm not writing this one square because one square is one only. So what we are doing is, we are adding this further as this is equals to 1 minus sine theta, the whole square as it is, upon 1 minus sine square theta. What is 1 minus sine square theta? 1 minus sine square theta is cos square theta. 1 minus sine square theta is cos square theta. You always need to write down the identity. You always need to write down the identity. Please write down the reason. Now children, can you see that this particular cos has a square at the same time, this parenthesis also has a square. So what we do is, we take the whole square common. We take the whole square common. So what I'm left with? I'm left with 1 minus sine theta children and here cos theta. So when this square applies to the numerator, we shall get 1 minus sine theta the whole square. This square when applies to the den denominator, I shall get cos square theta. Now, it is this square and this square root gets cancels off. That was the reason I took square common. That was the reason I took square common. This root had to get cancelled at one point. Reason, we have a sum from root to non-root. So, we write down this once again. After cancelling the root, what we have? We have 1 minus sine theta by cos theta. We have 1 minus sine theta by cos theta. Right? Root got cancelled off. Now, just split the denominator. 1 by cos theta minus sine theta by cos theta. What is 1 by cos theta, children? Sec theta. What is sine theta by cos theta? Tan theta. Do mention the reasons, please. Do mention the reason. 1 by cos theta is sec theta. Sine theta by cos theta is tan theta. What is this, children? It's our RHS. Kindly check. It's our RHS. So, since LHS is equals to RHS, write down the entire question. Therefore, under root of 1 minus sine theta upon 1 plus sine theta is equals to sec theta minus tan theta. Right? So this is one way. Root to non-root. What is the other way? Method number two. What I'm going to do, children? I'm going to go and take RHS to LHS. Non-root to root. Here we started off with LHS, ended up with RHS. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take RHS and then move on to get my LHS. So let's start. RHS. What is RHS? RHS is sec theta minus 10 theta. Sec theta minus 10 theta. So it's stated always, right from the beginning, convert your ratios in sines and cos. Sec is 1 by cos. 10, sine by cos. Do write down the reasons, please. Do write down the reasons. What next? Sir, we have in the denominator cos common. Okay. So 1 minus sine theta by cos theta. 1 minus sine theta by cos theta. Right? Now, what shall I do further? <laughs> Don't know. Because whatever we could solve it, simplify it, is what we have done. Now we don't know. Children, when everything gives way, if you are not in a position to think further that what should be done, always go to the question and ask question to the question. The question says that if you want RHS to LHS, you have to insert a root sign. And as of now, we don't have any root sign. So, we have to insert that root sign. We will. But sir, by simply inserting root sign, don't you think so that we'll be changing our solution? So, let's see what we are doing it. Since I wanted root sign, we are inserting root sign. In order to compensate this root sign, what we are doing is we are saying square. So that this square and this root gets nullified. We are inserting root sign, sir. What makes you insert root sign? Because you wanted root sign. In order to compensate this root sign, what are we doing? Squaring. Now insert the entire, entire stuff. 1 minus sine theta upon cos theta. Now, bifurcate the square. The square applies to numerator as well as the denominator. So, under root of 
1 minus sin theta the whole square upon cos square theta upon cos square theta as such stated in this technique never expand a minus b the whole square a plus b the whole square so can i say this as under root of 1 minus sin theta is 1 minus sin theta into 1 minus sin theta upon cos square theta is 1 minus sin square theta so cos square theta 1 minus sin square theta right what next we do as it is we do as it is and we say 1 minus sin theta into 1 minus sin theta don't you think so it's a square minus b square a plus b a minus b so a plus b a minus b 1 minus sin theta 1 minus sin theta gets cancels off we are left with under root of we are left with under root of 1 minus sin theta upon 1 plus sin theta and can you check what is our LHS our LHS is the same LHS since LHS z equals to RHS do write down the entire question under root of 1 minus sin theta upon 1 plus sin theta z equals to sec theta minus 10 theta sec theta minus 10 theta right children now the question arises now the question arises what so you said something that a square minus b square will always be there now children if you ask me that out of the two methods which one you will prefer i will prefer this two the second one second part those who are very much closely observing me understanding me mind you this is absolutely the reverse order of what the first sum we have done check it out it's absolutely the reverse order so am i playing with you people no now why i say that i want non root to root and not root to non root children in trigo we do have sums where at times we have to go and multiply the numerator ka conjugate there are sums whereby which we have to take conjugate of the numerator generally we have this tendency of taking conjugate of denominator so there are many students who fail to understand if those quality sums comes in the exam sir you told that i i should go for conjugate the denominator but somehow i did not get the answer your techniques did not work out so maybe in that particular question you are supposed to go for conjugate of numerator right so when you are in the dilemma whether to go for conjugate of numerator or denominator best to go with non root to root it is from root to non root you have to think about conjugate right but here did i any time spoke about conjugate did i any time say conjugate no i did not speak so better go from root to non root again here you will have that particular technique which i stated what you have to have a square minus b square 110 percent either of a minus b the whole square or a plus b the whole square should be there you, you can check it out a square minus b square a minus b the whole square it has to be there right a good quality sum which involves root